ready. Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and I have convinced the coach to appear on camera with me because today's project is this men's shirt. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make this collared loose fitting men's shirt and that is not to say that I won't take this and steal it to wear for myself. So check out the link below to grab the pattern and then meet me back here to see how to make it. Did you seriously just look at the I looked floor? down for when you pointed down. Let's go over the pieces you should have cut out. First, you should have one back piece that was cut on the fold so that when you open it, it's one solid piece. You should have two yoke pieces that were cut out on the fold so that they are identical. You should have two collar pieces. And on one of the collar pieces, you need to cut it out of fusible interfacing as well and then fuse that to the wrong side of the fabric. You should have two sleeve pieces and your sleeves should be mirror images of each other. This will naturally happen if you have the fabric folded in two and you cut them both out at the same time. On the sleeves, make sure to transfer the little notch marking that helps you tell what is the back of the sleeve and which side is the front. And then finally, you should have two front pieces, and just like the sleeves, these should be mirror images. And on these, there's one area indicated that needs to have interfacing on it. So you can either like fold your pattern to cut the interfacing out of that piece, or you can just trace the part that needs interfacing. And then that needs to be fused on both sides of the front. So each side is going to have interfacing. That's because this is where the button plackets are going to end up being. The first thing we're going to want to do is take the two shirt fronts and then finish off this faced edge. Now I have used my serger to do this, but you can also use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine. Just hand crank it and set it so that the needle hits on the fabric on one side and then just past the edge of the fabric on the other and back and forth. That will create the same effect of looping around the edge of the fabric so that it can't fray anymore. Once you have that done, we're going to take the two shirt fronts, and by the way, this is the neckline edge here, and then we're going to take one of the yokes. Now, I had to cut one of my yokes on the cross grain to make it fit on my fabric, and I don't want this one to be showing on the outside. So I'm gonna put this one aside, and this is the one I want showing on the outside. So I'm going to sew it right sides together with my two shirt fronts. Now this is the neck edge, and on the shirt fronts, this is the neck edge as well. So I just wanna make sure that I am matching up neck and shoulder edges when I pin this together. And I'm going to stitch these two seams. I'm using a half inch seam allowance. I'm using the default stitch on my machine, which is 2.5 millimeters. So these two facing edges, I now want to sew these to the other yoke. And remember, I have to match neckline edges, so this is gonna look kind of funny. But I need this one to go like this. All right, so what I've done is I'm gonna be creating a circle here. So these two edges get attached to this yoke, and these are the ones we sewed previously. Here's what this looks like currently. Now, I want to find the center of the outer yoke, and I am going to mark that. And the outer yoke is the one that is sewn to the shirt fronts on the shoulder edges, not on those little facing edges. Okay, so see, this is the one that I have the full seams on. 
not the one over here. Now the inner yoke, we're going to want to mark the center of that as well. This is just going to help us line everything up later. Okay, I'm going to set this aside while we work on the collar. So what you want to do with the collars are place the two of them right sides together and we are going to stitch along these three edges. Now we're going to want to clip the corners of the collar. So clip as close to that stitching point as you can without cutting through. And then kind of take two more triangles off. So you're really reducing the bulk at that corner. And then you can turn this right side out and press it. I'm going to do that and show you what it looks like. Here's what the collar looks like once it's turned and pressed. I highly recommend using this tool. I'll put a link to it below. This is called a point turner and it has this edge to help you really get into the corners of the collar and really push them out without ripping through the stitches. And this flat edge is handy um, to press out to make sure that you're ironing just along the seam and not accidentally like folding the fabrics in towards each other and ironing them that way. It's great when you are ironing too because you can kind of press it in there where you don't want to get your finger that close to the iron maybe, but you can put this in there. At this point, we are going to do some top stitching, which this is optional. If you don't want to do the top stitching, you can skip this part. But so to top stitch, I'm going to take this over to my machine and I'm going to lengthen my stitch slightly. The default stitch is a 2.5 millimeter length. I'm going to lengthen it to 3.5. And then I'm going to move my needle all the way over to the right so that I can stitch right on the edge there. Now that we've got the collar top stitch, what I want to do is mark the center of the collar as well. I'm going to fold it so I can find that center. There we go. I've got a pin marking the center of the collar. Now I want to take the yoke, the outer yoke, and whatever side of the collar I want showing, I want to lay that side up. So you can see my collar doesn't have as much print on this side as it does on this side. So I want the printed side facing up and I'm going to match the center of the collar with the center of my outer yoke, which is the one that the full shoulder seams are sewn on. And I'm going to pin those together and then I'm going to match the collar up around the edges of the neck here. When you get to this yoke seam, press it towards the shirt front. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you're pinning through both layers of the collar as well. Okay, so we've got the collar pinned in. Now what we want to do is we're going to fold this other yoke right sides together. I'm going to go back to matching up that center pin and folding this along the neckline here. Now the yoke seam should match this seam. And again, we want those all pressed away from the shirt front. That's going to give us the cleanest finish on the inside later. So I'm going through a lot of layers here because I have two yokes. I have two layers of collars sandwiched in between. I have some interfacing in play for the collar and for this front facing. But basically my goal is to match up all these raw edges 
And then when I get down here on the front, that should be folded perfectly so that those front necklines match. And there is no such thing as too many pins for this part. You really want to hold this together well without wrinkling because you are working with so many layers. So feel free to use as many pins as you think you need. So here's what this should look like. You've got a collar sandwiched in between two yoke necklines and going out onto those front facings. So we want to sew this seam. Before we do anything else to this seam, you do want to turn it right side out and you want to check to make sure that you haven't accidentally sewn any wrinkles or anything into the seam. If you have, you're going to want to grab your seam ripper and fix those areas before proceeding. But this looks like we're doing okay here. So the next thing you need to do is clip the curves for this collar so that it will lay nicely. And it's easier to see that if you kind of let it curve as it's laying out. You can see right here that area is rippling, so that's an area we need to clip. Basically, you just want to take these little tri triangular chunks out all along the curve to reduce the bulk and to let it curve. And then go ahead and turn this right side out and press, and I will show you what that looks like. All right, I've gone ahead and pressed this, and on the fronts here, I just went ahead and I pressed right down um, that fold line where the interfacing stops. That's where it will be pressed down. And so you can see, here's the outside of my shirt. I've got a collar that'll be worn like that, and here's the back yokes. So the next thing we need to do is to finish off this little bit of shoulder seam here. Okay, so this is going to be the inside of the shirt. And so we have this raw edge that is not attached to anything. So what we want to do is we want to match it up with the other yoke edge here. And then we're going to sew down until we meet that facing edge. So we'll sew these edges together. Let's take this over to the machine and just get your needle as far back here as you can without hitting or pinching or sewing in any of those wrinkles. So just to where you can get it to lay flat. And then you want to stitch right on top of the stitching line that's already there. So when I take this out of the machine, you can see now that here is the outside of the shirt where I had that already finished edge. And here is the inside of the shirt and now that edge is finished as well. Repeat that on the other side. Ta-da, this is starting to look like a shirt, especially now that I've got those inside edges finished. So now we need to attach the shirt back. So what I want to do here is, here we go, find the top edge of the shirt back and I want to place it together with only the outer yoke. I want to take that inner yoke and get it out of the way. So I'm just going to quickly pin this. Okay, now I'm going to roll up my shirt back and I'm going to roll up my shirt fronts. So I've got them out of the way. And you'll see what that leaves me down here is my other yoke. And what I want to do is roll it around. We're stuffing all those shirt backs and shirt fronts in the middle, and we're making a yoke burrito here. What I have here, I have my inner yoke, I have my outer yoke, and I have my shirt back squished in the middle. 
Line up all three of those raw edges. Make sure that your shirt, the rest of your shirt front and your shirt back are out of the way and safely tucked inside that burrito. Okay, now we're going to sew that seam. As you're stitching this, feel through there and make sure you've only got those three layers and there's nothing else caught in your seam. can turn this whole burrito right side out and you will see what we have is the back has now been attached to the yoke and on the inside we have a clean finish of that inner yoke as well. So we need to go press this yoke seam and then if desired you can also top stitch that seam the same way we did the collar. It's time to put the sleeves in. So I've top stitched my yoke and pressed it all and now I need to put my sleeve in. So here's the back of the shirt, here's the front of the shirt. The notch on the sleeve corresponds to the back of the shirt. Because the sleeve is a convex curve and the arm side is a concave curve, these are not going to match on the raw edges of the fabric. They will, however, match on the seam line. That's because the seam line of the sleeve is going to be shorter than the bigger curve of the um, outer edge of the sleeve. And on the arm side, the opposite is going to happen. The inner curve here is shorter than the seam line. The seam line is going to be longer, but they will match. Just again, don't worry about raw edges. Worry about where the seam lines are and making sure this matches there. So go ahead and pin your sleeve in. What I like to do is pin in a couple pins on each end. So I match the back and then I match the front or vice versa. And then I just kind of walk the rest of the sleeve into place with my hands. So I'm feeling here to match it at the seam line. And when I get to roughly the top of the sleeve, somewhere in this area, I'll go ahead and add a pin there and make sure that I walk the other side too to make sure that I've got it in the right place. I think I went too far that way. There we go. And then I can pin from my pins to the midpoint. There we go. And then you're going to want to sew that sleeve seam and finish that seam. I'm going to do that on my serger. In fact, I've already done this on the other side. So here is what the sewn in sleeve looks like. And here's the outside of it. If you don't have a serger, I have a link below to some other seam finish methods and all of the rest of them work with a regular sewing machine. So you can try one of those. Then after you have the sleeve sewn in, what we want to do, fold your shirt so that the sleeve seam matches here. And then also the underarm seam matches and we're gonna sew that in one long pass. So let me show you what this looks like when I'm done with those steps. Okay, y'all, once you have those side seams sewn in like this, then we can turn the whole shirt right side out and you can see that all we have left to do is hems and buttons. Okay, so for the sleeves, the hem is easy. Just fold it to the wrong side twice, pin that up, and you can stitch around the sleeve. 
for the bottom. What I like to do with the facings, because if you try to fold this up twice to make a hem, it gets bulky and you have this little corner that can stick out. So what I like to do instead is flip this to the wrong side on that fold line and then I like to sew one inch here because I'm going to fold up twice, half an inch. So I'm going to sew one inch here and you'll see what happens. Okay, now what I can do, since I've got that one inch sewn in, is I can turn this to the right side. It gives me a very neat finish on that edge. And then I can take the remaining edge of the shirt and fold it under twice. Just like that. Okay, y'all, once we have the sleeves and the bottom of the shirt hemmed, then all that's left is the buttons. And I'm going to give you a few tips for determining button placement. Button placement, the ideal button placement, can vary from body to body. So I always recommend if you are making this shirt for yourself or for someone else, try it on and that's how you'll determine the best placement for the buttons. On both men and women, you generally want a button at the widest point of the chest so that you don't have button, um, the button placket gaping because there isn't a button there. Like there's one here and there's one here, but not where you actually need it. So determine where that is. Then you also want to determine like how big of a lapel do you want falling open here? You may want, you know, wider lapels. You may want, you know, my husband's going to want thinner and smaller like this. And you want the top button to be going into that area so that it will create that same fall. If I don't put the top button till down here, then the shirt is going to fall open much further than he probably wants. So again, try it on. I love this tool. This is called a Simflex gauge for spacing buttons because once you determine where you want that chest button, let's say it's gonna go right here, then you can spread out your gauge and you can decide, okay, if I put two buttons and the middle one is here, is the top one gonna be up high enough? Maybe not, I can spread a little further. And oh look, now that's got the top button approximately where I want it, it's got the middle button where I need it to be. And then I can look like how many more down do I wanna go? Probably I would put the last button in this area. The last button anywhere from three to five inches from the bottom of the shirt is usually fine. So you got a lot more wiggle room at the bottom. If I'm using smaller buttons, um, you want to place those closer together. So I might decide, okay, I'm using really little buttons and I just cannot get that little button up here high enough without spacing them too far apart. Let's squinch this up and I'll put my third button so it'll hit on the chest line and we'll go like this. And then, okay, obviously I don't wanna put the last button here. So this is eight buttons and I'll come down and figure out I need to go like one, two, three more buttons. So I'm gonna need 11 buttons for the front of the shirt. Again, I think this is a great tool for buttonholes. I have the link to that below. So figure out where you want the buttonholes to fall. Remember that on a men's shirt, the left side is the side that you're gonna be sewing the buttonholes on and it will be on top. If it is a women's shirt, it would be the opposite. So you would put the right side on top and sew the buttonholes on the right side. I have links below to posts on sewing buttonholes and buttons to help you out if you need more help with that. But once you get that done, then you're done with this project.